So first off, sorry for the bad lighting. It is uh, dark out because it's the winter and the sun sets at like five o'clock now. Anyway, I just got back from Micro Center with one of my friends and on that trip, I picked up a Ryzen 9 3900X. This is going to be going in a new build and I'm hoping to have that done by the end of the year. But because Micro Center is doing their Black Friday prices for basically the whole month, I figured I would just go get it now and beat the crowds. I already cut the tape on the back, so I can just lift that off, and we have our processor and a sticker right away. So this is a 12-core, 24-thread processor, and a nice sticker there as well. That adds about 10 FPS in most games. And then I think we lift this off, yep, and we have our installation instructions, and then we have our cooler. And this is RGB, of course, and that should, combined with a sticker, give me about a 25% increase in performance. So I actually lifted the cooler off and the bottom of it came off. So it looks like there's some cables in there. I'm gonna stick that back on so I don't mess up the thermal compound. You can't really see that. So not really a whole lot in the box. This is a nice looking cooler. I do plan on using a different cooler. I'll probably throw this in that Kali Linux PC build I did back in the day because I am probably getting a Cooler Master or Noctua cooler for this. When the lighting's a bit better tomorrow, I'm probably going to be installing this in my X370 Tai Chi. I think it needs a BIOS update for that, so that'll be fun. So I've never actually done a BIOS update on a motherboard before, but to get the 3900X to run in this board, I need to do that. The setup here is kind of the remains of the Kali hacking PC, and I'll put a link to that video in the description. The motherboard is the X370 Tai Chi from Azrock. I got this in like March or April from my buddy at school. It also has a Ryzen 5 1600AF. That is a six core first generation Ryzen processor, but it actually uses the second generation architecture, hence the AF at the end. And then I have a 960, a 250 gig SSD. And in the back there, I have 32 gigs of RAM. You can't really see it. I'll actually zoom in a bit. I'll be taking three of them out, just running the bare minimum when I'm doing the update. And I really should put this on a UPS, but I don't really think that's feasible right now. So we're just gonna take our chances. I did test the cooler that comes with this processor and it does uh, light up and everything, which is nice. And I can't remember if this board had the original AM4 cooler mounting bracket. And if it did, I have no idea where I put it. So I bought this kind of cheap one off Amazon and it does fit but it almost seems like the tolerances are off by maybe like 0.1 millimeters because the cooler does seem a little bit tight, but I'm sure it's fine. And when I actually build the new system, I'm not even gonna be using the stock cooler, so. I'm not actually sure which BIOS this is running and I don't really think it's necessary to know, but I'm just gonna fire it up and check anyway. So I'll hit the power supply switch and there's no onboard power button, so I have to poke it with a screwdriver, which is always fun. And you might not be able to see the screen too well. No, you can actually see that pretty well, I think. So it looks like it is running BIOS P5.60. You can see it up there. So it looks like version 6.4 is the latest. Uh, this is a lovely thing I just noticed. Support for Ryzen XT series, which means the 3900X isn't the latest that this board can run. If we go to the Instant Flash button, it opens up this tab, which tells us to extract the zip after downloading it, save the files to a FAT32 USB drive, and then boot into the BIOS and flash the BIOS. Pretty simple. Uh, don't power off. Let's hope the power doesn't go out. I'll have it on video if it does. All right, let's go ahead and begin the download. We can select the global version. So we have our BIOS file pulled up and our flash drive over here, and it is FAT32. And we can just pull this file over there. Uh, seems simple enough. I'll go ahead and eject the drive. Eject. And let's give this a So you can just barely see the drive in the USB port, and I'm going to turn on the power. That was great. My lights are sensitive because they're LEDs. Don't worry, that wasn't like a huge brownout thing that just happened. Anyway, we can go ahead and power on the board and hold down delete. 
So let's go over to, I want to say, I found it earlier actually, and let's find it. So instant flash, there it is. Do you want to update UEFI to that bunch of numbers? Yep. Programming success. Press enter to reboot system. All right, let's go over to exit. Load defaults. Save changes and exit. And we should be ready to install the 3900X. So here's the current system. I'm going to pull out the video card and the memory. The SSD can stay, I think. It's not really getting in the way or risking being damaged being there. I'll pull out the RAM. And we can go ahead and take the board off of the tray. Actually, I think taking the cooler off is a better place to start. I'm also going to do this at my desk. All right, we can unplug that and lift the cooler off. Cooler is still nice and warm. I'm going to clean off the thermal compound. And then I guess we can pull out the CPU. I don't really have a board to put this in. I'm going to put it back in the... 3900X's box, just for safekeeping, but I do plan on using this in a different build at some point. So I'll just lift that off and set it IHS down. Actually, I think I'm going to keep this mounting plate and just attach the third-party things to it like that instead of using the back plate they came with. And I will put these on the right way around, take this screw out, I think this is the first CPU installation I've actually been kind of stressed about because this is the first CPU that I've bought brand new. So I'm going to lift it off, align the triangle. You guys actually can't see that. There we go. Now for thermal compound, I'm just going to be using this way outdated giant tube with a broken nozzle that smears it everywhere. It's fine for testing. I'll probably use Arctic Silver 5 when I actually build the system. This is really stupid. I should just get a new syringe. In fact, I think I have one that I was going to put this in. That should be fine. Got to clean that off later. We can pull this out here. Again, no thermal compound on it. And I'm going to kind of lean it down like that so I can put it on that first latch and pull the lever and there we go it does seem a little tight but i don't think it'll do any damage if it is and if it's not then oh well of course the only way to take advantage of any performance boosts with this new processor is to enable the rgb on its cooler so with the cooler plugged in i'm going to put the motherboard back on the tray and get everything plugged in all right, power supply on, and okay. The uh, cooler took a while to spin up, but does seem to be doing something or boot looping. And we have display. Nice, we boot. That is fantastic. And I do have Windows and Linux installed on this machine. So I'm going to turn off the lights. Looks like now let's go to Windows Boot Manager. I think this still works. And I should plug in the uh, Ethernet cable. I was going to install a 3K2 in this system at some point. So you can kind of hear the fans going crazy, but the 
heat sink isn't warm to the touch at all, so I'm kind of worried about that. I'm going to install CPU-Z and IDA64 so we can take a better look at things. So in IDA64, it looks like our CPU usage is quite high, but the temperatures are pretty good. They are about what I'd expect on a stock cooler for a CPU this powerful. Uh, this PC, we can go to Properties and uh, Ryzen 9 3900X 12 core, 8 gigs of RAM, all as well. But yep, you can see Ryzen 9 3900X, 105 watts, I thought it was 95, but whatever. And we are currently running at just above, well, just around 4 gigahertz, which is fantastic. So we are running above base clock. I forgot that I had installed folding at home on this computer. But I was going to try folding with a Grid K2. Well, I have the 1600 AF in the box just for safekeeping. And I think with that said, I'm going to start wrapping up the video. So I am excited to use this as my new CPU for the next uh, few years until I upgrade to something like a Threadripper or whatever's around when my next uh, upgrade cycle comes along. Uh, it is Thanksgiving Day right now, and I'm hoping to have the full build uploaded probably by late January. I still have a bit of saving up to do for other components, and I'm not really sure what video card I'm going to be using, because I might get one from my friend, I might have to use the RX 480. Things are still kind of up in the air with that. All in all, I think this is going to be a great stable platform for my next build. I love ASRock boards. I have a nice Ryzen CPU. And with that said, I think that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and consider subscribing if you want to see more. I also have social media. Go ahead and follow if you want to see incremental updates to my projects. I'll leave links to those in the description. Please consider donating via PayPal and Patreon. I also have an Amazon wish list in the description. Any amount is greatly appreciated. And once again, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.